Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Uh, I'm coming at this from a little bit different perspective. Translation. Um, from a little different perspective from uh, the other speakers. Uh, I'm an American who spent 25 years in publishing in New York. I joined the American organization of Peace Corps in uh, 2000 at the age of 48. And I was sent to Romania. I got interested in... Oh, that's how you uh, I, I got interested in these kids I saw on, on the streets begging, the little ones, and um, I was told by the local authorities that that was gypsy culture and that's how they like to live. And I didn't believe that. Uh, I guess because, I think partially because I grew up in Texas when all the criticisms of Roma were being made against what was then called Negroes in polite society. Um, and so with a Romanian woman, I started collecting these, these kids and started, um, and we created educational programs. From the very beginning, the programs were in the schools, but they weren't a school program. We got schools to give us a classroom. Uh, and to be perfectly honest, it took us about eight years to come up with a solution that we feel could really scale up. A lot of things work on a small level. We've got a couple of really committed people doing it. But if you want to scale up to a national level, and I thought and read a lot about what had worked in the American Civil Rights Movement and what had not worked in that movement. So, uh, this is what we started. Next. And, okay, why is early education so very important? This is, this is a fact. Nobody no experts dispute the fact that early experiences reduce, um, impoverished early experience reduces lifelong brain capabilities. It's just a fact. Next. And it's also been shown in multiple studies that early education reduces school abandonment rates and it reduces unemployment rates. It reduces incarceration rates. There are, are direct links between this, that, and this has been shown over and over again. The uh, next slide. The Nobel economist uh, James Heckman uh, has, has shown this quite dramatically in uh, mathematical models about programs, about the return on investment over time of where the public money goes. And next, the European, uh, the European Union recognizes this. You know, there's lots of written material about how important early education is. But if you actually look at what's happening in, especially in the new uh, EU member states, there's absolutely no focus on it. Next slide. Okay, here's a good example. At the age of five and six, Roma children in Romania know about 20, about 25 percent of them know at least 10 alphabet letters. Those of you who are parents, my guess is that your six-year-old children know the alphabet. Non-Roma neighboring children knew much more, about twice as much, in terms of alphabet letters. Then you go to numeracy. And it's much the same, the same thing. If your parents are uneducated and nobody's ever told them that they ought to be working directly with their kids and talking to their kids, they don't know it. And they don't do it because it's not, you know, that's, it's not an instinct. It's something that we all learn. All right, today in Romania, about 
20% of uh, the Roma are in early education programs. That's actually way higher than reality because all that represents is the number that are registered. And it's easy to register kids <coughs> for preschool. It's very difficult to get them to come every day. Okay, 3% are in high school. 3% make it to high school. And 1% makes it to university. Less than 1%, I believe. Okay, so how do we get them in preschool? There is definitely a link between early education and um, success in school. Well, you've got to do it on the local level. It's not just a matter of laws. And you've got to educate and incentivize parents. And this is what it took us. It took us a long time to develop a strategy that really worked, um, regardless of who was implementing it. Uh, I, I always knew that you had to provide incentives to people, but what we found that really works on a large scale is to give food coupons to poor parents. They don't have to declare themselves as Roma, they just have to be, be poor, be in, living in extreme poverty. Food coupons tied to their daily attendance in preschool. What happens? Well, here's the next slide, please. Okay. In one, this is one uh, one community where, in 2008, before the program, in 2009, also before the program, you had about uh, most of the kids were were enrolled, but only about 21 20 percent were coming every day. Then, after the program started, and it's not just a matter of getting food coupons; it's working with the local authorities and it's training the teachers. But the biggest difference, I believe, is that food coupons, monetary incentives in the form of 12 euros a month, that was enough, that is enough, to get people in rural communities who are in extreme poverty to get up and walk one kilometer to school or more and then go and pick their kids up at 12. 12 euros a month is enough to get them to change a behavior that actually is, is a lot of trouble. It's much easier to sit at home than it is to do that, especially when you live in rural Romania in the wintertime. Next slide. We have 20 programs right now, and before the programs, um, you had about 33% on average attendance in school. And now, the daily attendance among these children is 85%. Next. Okay. Um, as I said before, you ha we have to work with the local authorities. And so I think too many times the, the, the method is to um, oppose the local authorities. And we find in many, many communities, the local authorities know this is a problem. They know that the number of kids who aren't getting an education is increasing. And they would like to do something about it, but they haven't a clue what to do. We provide the money for the food coupons, and we provide some teacher training, and we provide some materials for the classroom, uh, and they provide clothes, and, um, uh, shoes for the kids so they don't uh, so they can get to school. Uh, okay. And most importantly is the parent education component of this. You know, in Romania the general feeling is that oh they you know gypsies don't care about education. When when you incentivize them and you require them to come to school uh, to get the food coupons and you talk about the importance of education and their kid comes home and their kid can count to 10, it makes a huge difference. So they, um, so that's a very important element. Here are my conclusions. 
most Roma children in her first grade much less prepared than their non-Roma peers. Secondly, two, incentives to parents are crucial to change habits and induce daily attendance. Third, cooperation between local Roma leaders and local authorities is absolutely crucial. And fourth, short-term projects are a waste of money. The EU has, has started some kindergarten programs in Romania that were one year long. I mean, come on, it's going to take 20, 30, 40 years to see real significant change. But if it doesn't happen at the, at the early education level, you can't do anything about it later on. Thank you.